Hola, comrades. Today's topic of interest, Super Mario Odyssey. It would not be an exaggeration to call this game the most anticipated Mario game in the last 10 years. Super Mario Galaxy was the last time this series commanded so much attention, a gorgeous game that revolutionized its series while charting a new course for the gaming industry. Mario Galaxy was a juggernaut, but what had the series done since? Sure, it had released a sequel, but while Galaxy 2 was more polished than the original, it did not break much new ground. What else has Mario done lately? Let's see, there have been the new Super Mario Bros. games, but while those games are fun to play, they're more examples of nostalgia pandering than innovation. There was Mario Maker, which is enjoyable and interesting, but is also Nintendo basically saying, we've run out of ideas for Mario levels, so make your own. There was Super Mario Run for mobile devices, but I don't think even the most ardent fanboys count that as a worthwhile entry to the franchise. What else? Mario 3D World? That was alright, but I don't think it's anyone's favorite Mario game. The question was raised. In this rapidly changing gaming landscape, is there still a place for Mario? Here's a short list of important games that have come out since Mario Galaxy was released in November 2007. Xenoblade Chronicles, Undertale, The Last of Us, Bioshock 2, Bioshock Infinite, all four Uncharted games, Spec Ops, The Line, Life is Strange, Journey, Braid. Most of these games you couldn't imagine existing in the gaming landscape of 10 years ago. In the middle of last decade, the industry was still in its adolescence. Focusing on graphics and system power, and giving stories and characters the shaft. Isn't that still the case, some of you may ask? To which I say, no. Not like it was. Not even close. To its credit, Gaming has really grown up in the last decade. Over 50% of my, my favorite games of all time have been released in the last 10 years. Gone are the days when every other game was a Call of Duty ripoff. We've gotten less cheap licensed games and more cerebral, intelligent works that challenge what gaming can be, both in structure and emotional resonance. The landscape is much lusher and more open than it was 10 years ago. If you told an industry expert in 2007 that one of the buzziest games of 2015 was going to be a gameplay light experience centering on teenagers in the Pacific Northwest, they would have laughed you off. While this is the most talked about Mario release of the last decade, it arguably isn't even the most talked about Nintendo release of the year. Breath of the Wild got people excited by promising a Skyrim-like level of immersion, then enthralled them upon release by providing that and then some. Odyssey has not gotten people this excited. How could it? How could the Mario series radically reinvent itself for this new age of gaming? How about by going back to what made the series great to start with? It is without doubt or ambivalence that I declare this to be the Fat Italian Plumber's greatest adventure since Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64 in 1996. Yes, even better than Galaxy and Galaxy 2. Whereas those games were Nintendo's attempts to catch up to the changing tides of gaming, this is Nintendo proudly claiming its hallowed place 
in mainstream gaming and building upon it. When I started playing, I was afraid this game would fall into the Sonic trap. What I mean by that is I was afraid it would strain so hard to impress old fans that it would forget to innovate, but it is with joy that I say I was wrong. Like in 64 and Sunshine, and notably unlike in the Galaxy games, you get to wander around kingdoms on your own time, exploring these many worlds and discovering for yourself the treasures they hold. The game trusts you, the player, to know what you're doing, and it rewards you by allowing you to explore a wide variety of locales, from a modern metropolis to a strangely appealing combination of a lava area and a land made of giant sweets. This extends to the title of the game. An Odyssey is a long, winding journey full of tumult and tribulations. The source of the term, of course, is the ancient Greek epic, The Odyssey, the story of a man desperately attempting to return to his homeland of Ithaca after the Trojan War. It is also worth noting that when the protagonist, Odysseus, returns from his voyage, he finds a group of suitors trying to marry his wife, Penelope. He then proceeds to kill them and win her back. Similarly, though without the killing, in Mario Odyssey, Bowser has kidnapped Peach and intends to marry her, and Mario has to defeat Bowser and rescue Peach. Impressively, Odyssey manages to walk the tightrope between innovation and tradition. This isn't Nintendo basically turning the entire Mario franchise on its head like they did with Zelda. This is Nintendo owning what that franchise is. I cannot stress enough how incredibly important this is. They're not trying to play to trends. They're not trying to make their titular plumber cool or hip. They're not trying to make the Mario world dark and gritty because that's what the kids are ostensibly into these days. Nintendo is owning the fact that Mario is a goofy franchise starring goofy characters in a goofy world. And it's owning the fact that Mario is no longer the elephant in the room. It's okay with the fact that Mario will no longer have the status it used to. Rather than trying to make their icon everything for everyone, it embraces and doubles down on what Mario is. How else can you explain Mario traveling on a hat-shaped ship named the Odyssey, with a hat sidekick named Cappy? How else can you explain Pauline, of all people, being the mayor of a modern city? How else can you explain the existence of a big band song entitled Jump Up Superstar serving as the game's anthem? How else can you explain Mario's greatest power in this game, which is basically hat-induced mind control? It sounds so silly, and it is so silly, but Nintendo asserts that there's nothing wrong with that, and they're right. A silly game can be just as effective as a serious game. What matters is engaging the player, and on that level, the Mario series hasn't been better in over two decades. Has this been a great year for Nintendo, or what? I talked about this a little in my analysis of ARMS, but between that game, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey, and the upcoming Pokémon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the big N is back in a big way. The Switch has been a roaring success, and the Nintendo sucks comments seem to have decreased in popularity after years of flourishing during the lean age of the Wii U. Perhaps Nintendo will never be able to break into Microsoft and Sony's share of the market, but it doesn't need to. It's carved out its own niche, and as long as it fills that niche well, it will continue to thrive, no matter how the gaming marketplace changes and evolves. Anyway, if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce even more amazing content. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that superstar-ish stuff. Adios, comrades!